Hello everybody. Right then, today then I was going to fit my smoke box onto my boiler now I've got it painted. But I've decided to take a step back and before I fit it onto the boiler, I'm going to have a look at my pipe where, where my steam is going to go to my cylinders. And I thought about this and I thought I'll do... I thought I'd do this little video for any complete beginners out there that don't understand what people are talking about when they start talking about superheaters. And I'm, uh, the reason behind it is because 18 months ago when I was a complete and utter beginner, okay, I've got an engineering background, but I knew nothing about steam locos. And there was a chap talking to me that first week about superheaters. And whether... <laughs> Whether it's he couldn't explain it properly or whether I couldn't absorb it properly or more likely it was a mixture of both I hadn't got a clue what he was talking about and it just went straight over my head. So I thought <clears throat> if anybody's in the same position as me as I was 18 months ago it might be helpful and useful for me to just go through this a bit higher up than a, than a beginner I suppose to a, than a complete beginner to a complete beginner sorry so what I'm going to do uh, you talk to different people and no matter who you talk to about super eaters I found that you've got some people uh, ultra extreme for them and then other people are ultra extreme against them <coughs> And then you've got all them people in the middle, a bit of both, and no matter who you talk to, you've got a variation. You never get you never get a, a you never get a true answer that you're looking for. And I think the only way to, to find out about this is to experience yourself and go through it. And I'm going to make a configuration for non superheated steam, and I'm going to make another configuration for superheated steam, so I can experience for myself easily what what, what superheated steam does and what non superheated steam does it supposedly makes the local more efficient and supposedly stops it spitting too much oily water out of the chimney so let's take a step back then because in this sweet people that i'm working to he don't tell you anything about superheaters the only thing it tells you and that's in the, the boiler drawings which are here is that the front two plate that you make, this is for a standard non-superheated boiler but if you're going to make a superheated boiler, this is where you stop and you change that for this configuration for a front two plate to that so it's a different layout and you've got two bigger tubes, one on each side where your stainless steel superheated tubes go down to the fire right, so let's have a look at the boiler drawing so this is the header that we're talking about and then you've got two pipes coming off at 45 degrees, one to each side, to your cylinders. And that's a normal, non-superheated, wet header. <clears throat> right, so anybody that doesn't know what I'm talking about, wet header here, let's go back another step. In the boiler, this type of boiler I'm doing is a marine boiler. The water heats up, and the steam collects in this part of the top of the boiler. And then this tube here is the pickup tube for the steam. And that's going to pick the steam up and take it to the regulator, which is bolted to the front. And then you operate the regulator and send steam down the steam tube to the header. So that's the wet header. So if you're going to put superheaters in, what you're going to do then, you're going to put two stainless steel tubes up those boiler tubes that are shown you, them larger boiler tubes, two on each side. And the first tube is going to connect to the wet header and send the, the wet steam up to the firebox. Then it's going to be joined and looped to this other tube. Then this, the superheated steam then is going to come down and then you're going to branch off to your cylinders with superheated dry steam, apparently. Now, when you put these stainless steel tubes up your boiler copper tubes, you're limited for space. So you can't just put a bend on these stainless steel tubes because they've got to come back down tight like that together. So it's impossible to get a bend on. And in the manufactured ones, I've never actually seen one in the flesh, but apparently, I've seen a picture of one, apparently they, they, they put a dart on the front they profile the tubes at the end and then they put a dart on and they stainless steel weld it all on so you've got a passage from one tube to the next now them superheaters apparently and I don't know this for sure I think they're hundreds of pounds to buy depending on what loco you've got but you're talking of hundreds of pounds and you know me by now I won't be spending that much 
so I've got to come up with an idea to get around that now I've got snippets of information from various people on various sources I've also spoke to a good friend of mine Brian on phone because we're in this COVID-19 lockdown can't, I can't go and see him so and he's nearly 90 now Brian and uh, he, I were his, um, I were his apprentice when I was back at work with him many moons ago that anyway I digress and he's he's told me on the phone how he did one once um, we are having it silver uh, so we're having it stainless steel welded welded and I'll probably incorporate some ideas that he's given me I've not seen any drawing so I think I'm going to do that in another video so I'll, I'll catch up with, you with then in part two and I'll show you how I'm going to go about it and do it so thanks for watching then